Okay, next thing would be um, defocus, and now it becomes cool. Defocus node is quite um, quite self-explanatory as well, basically. You just need a, a, an image input and a C pass for the depth, because, well, depth of field works according to the depth or, or to, the, to the distance from the pixel to the camera. And <clears throat> we just connect that. You can see what we get. We get this. And this, let me just delete that. This is just a preview, okay? That's why it's so grainy and so ugly looking. Um, and now you can also see that everything is blurred, okay? And that is because right now, if we select our camera, if we go to the camera properties over here, and if we then go to limits, you can see this line, which is everything within the camera range, but you can also see this um, cross over here, okay? And that is that indicates where the the point of focus is okay right now what's actually in the sensor itself is in focus which is impossible so let's change that to something bigger to something like there so now the, the monkey should be in focus f12 i think i'm on the wrong frame here let me just see that's better no energy and now you can see if we change something here Oh, we also need to make sure it says use C buffer, okay? Then it actually uses the C depth as the factor to blur everything. You can see now you can barely see any blur at all. Now let's just uncheck preview because uh, we don't need it. This is just, um, well, a previewed version of the original and it's supposed to be faster, but my computer or today's computers don't really take so much time to calculate this, so it's not a big deal. And now you need to change the f-stop, okay? The higher the f-stop, the, the less blur, the lower the f-stop, the more blur. If we go to 50, for example, we get some blur going on. 20, we get a bit more blur in the background, you can see it over there. Um, let's go with 10, which is quite a lot. Then this is really blurred and the foreground is really smooth. And you can see this effect is just awesome. Now, um, from top to bottom, this is a type, okay? And this is important for... Let's just do something really quick to display, demonstrate that. Let's just um, add a circle. Let's, in the context menu, set it to fill. Um, align to view. Actually, let's go to camera view. Align to view. Okay, let's move it over there. Let's scale this one down. Quite small. Okay, like this. And then let's just move it to over there there so it's really in the depth of field zone or actually in the yeah okay let's give it a new material let's make it shadeless and completely white and then let's just select off ground let's make it a darker gray something like there like this probably okay and then let's just render this again and you can see this is what we get and now if we go back to the node editor, you can see um, you can see this bright spot over there and how it is blurred, okay? And right now we are... Uh, I thought we used a circular at first, okay? And um, now if... Let's just give it a, even more blur. Let's go with the f top of 5, which would be really extreme, okay? You can see this circle, okay? If we go to pentagonal, you can see it looks like a pentagon. Um, now, um, pentagonal is not quite my thing to go. I usually like hexagonal. And you can also see when you have smooth edges, uh, as opposed to this um, this bright spot, when you have smooth edges, then the, the difference is not that big. I mean, it does look differently, and it's it's like there's more blur with the 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 higher counts, like octagonal or so. But uh, it's just yeah, I like hexagonal the most usually. Let's go with an even stronger blur three. Now we're talking. <laughs> okay, you can see what it does there. Uh, and yeah, it's it's always uh, more interesting than just circular. This is always a bit boring. Um, yeah. Okay, and something I just noticed is that it, around the edges, it's much smoother with hexagonal or with, with one of those instead of, a cir of, instead of circular. Okay. It's really <clears throat> a, pro a problem zone there. But anyway, on to the next thing. Uh, let's just move that to hexagonal 
And now the next thing is angle, okay? And this is basically supposed to allow you to rotate this uh, hexagon right now, okay? So if you set that to 20 degrees, it should rotate the hexagon by 20 degrees, but it doesn't do that. It actually does nothing. And I'm not sure if this is a bug or something, because I thought previously it was possible to rotate them to any degree you want. If you go to triangular, you have like two stages right now. You can go to zero, which looks like this, and then 90 degrees, which looks like this, but there's no, nothing in between really. And I don't really know if this is some kind of bug or something. But yeah, basically you're supposed to be able to rotate um, You can see it's a little something there, but it doesn't really work properly, in my opinion. Anyway, with this, you can rotate your um, end guns. Put it back to zero. And next thing is gamma correction. If you check that, you can see it gives you a few issues right now, um, which is not really supposed to happen. What it usually does, it just makes the bright areas a bit more um, dominant, okay? So you can see over here, there's some bright, there are some bright values blurred into the darker values. Now the problem is that it doesn't really work because of the alpha in the background. So let's just try something. Um, let's just get a mix node, input the image there, mix it according to the alpha with white, and then we get this. Okay, now if we use that as an input, then it should actually work because there's no alpha anymore. Yeah, here we go. Now you can see um, uh, with gamma correction, it looks like this and without it looks like this. What it basically does, you can see it everywhere a little bit. It's just that with gamma correction, the bright areas um, have a bit more power. Okay, they kind of blur into the darker areas. Okay, and... Yeah, it looks in some scenes a bit more realistic than the other way around. Um, okay, so then we have the f-stop, we already talked about that, and then the max blur. If we set that down, or up actually, then the maximum amount of blur is just this number, okay? This is really subtle, only 0.1. You can see the higher that is, the more blur is allowed in your scene, so to say. This is too much again, sorry about that. Two. You can see, not enough. And you can see now, um, the maximum blur is already reached up here, okay? Even if you increase that, nothing changes in this area, okay? And so you need to make sure that this is at a reasonably high number, because otherwise it looks unrealistic, because there's no way with, let's say, four, there's no way that this has the same amount of blur as this thing in the foreground, okay? So you need to make sure that this, there, it's got the range is big enough so it can actually display all the different um, blur stages, okay? Next thing is threshold. We talked about that before. Let's just go to zero again. If we set that to zero, then um, you can see kind of like a, a, a blur or that the, the, the color from the background gets drawn into the foreground, okay? The, if you set that to one, you can see there's a sharper edge there a little bit, or it's just um, the color of difference is, 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 is bigger. If you then increase that even more, you can see it works in the beginning, but then at some point it starts to revert and it starts becoming worse again. And you can also see those artifacts sometimes. Okay. That still works, and then at some point it starts to go backwards. Here we go, now you can see it's similar to the beginning again. And in this case, actually, this looks better than with, with one, because now this edge is just too sharp and too weird looking. At least if we increase it even a bit more, you can see this is not very realistic. Um, okay. Then we've got preview, as I said before, this just makes everything ugly, but faster, okay. And it can give you a, quite an artistic effect. Uh, yeah, but a bit more samples, maybe let's go with 30 samples. A bit more, 50 samples. You can see this can look pretty cool. It's still about as fast as without preview. Um, yeah, anyway, quite a cool effect in my opinion as well, but usually you don't use it. Okay. 
So yeah, this is basically your um, your defocus node. What you can also do, by the way, if you don't use a C buffer, then you can just work with this. And now the higher that is, um, the more blur you have and the smaller that is, let's go with 0.5. You can see the less blur you have, but it, yeah, and this way it doesn't really take the, um, the distance from the camera into account, okay, yeah. And yeah, it isn't a very clean way to do this, and it looks a bit weird, but it works in some cases as well. Um, okay, so that is the defocus node. Let's just cut that off. Let's just delete that. Let's just move th this one to over there. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is the glare node, okay? And now it becomes actually quite cool. Um, let's do one thing first. Let's go to the th 3D view. Let's select this circle there, and let's, instead of make it shaders, let's make it emitting, okay? Because if it emits something, then it's brighter than one, and this is quite useful for us, okay? F12, to, make, to render that. No, there you do. And now you can see what this one does. It gives you different light effects, okay? Um, or different effects when light hits the camera, how it is supposed to be handled. Right now, if we connect that to there and that to there, then our result is this, okay? And you can see the brightest spot in our scene is this um, spot over here that actually emits light. And you can see there's this glare effect going on, okay? If you set the threshold to zero, then everything is treated that way, and it looks like this, okay? Uh, this is an effect you usually see in very cheap productions, very cheap videos where people think, oh, look, it, it glows, let's make everything glow. And... Um, yeah, the threshold is there to change what is used, uh, what what is actually light and what isn't light. Okay, what uh, how bright does something have to be un until it gets blurred or until it gets a glare effect? And right now, we, over here we have a value of two. So if you set this to two, you can see something happens. If you go to two point one, you can see this is gone again. And so the lower this, let's go with one. Then you can see. This gets blurred, but everything else isn't because everything else is less bright than one. And um, yeah, that's essentially it. Now there are four different modes. We have simple star, which just creates this. Fog glow, which just creates a glow around the object, which is kind of hard. Let's just go with mix to one. This way, it only shows us the processed image. You can see this is um, the glow. If you go to nine, this is a bit bigger. You can just see this glow around. It's, it's quite subtle, so it's hard to see. With low, it should be easier to see. No, high. Yeah, here we can see it. There is this glow around um, the the dot. And then we also have streaks, which just is that what we saw before. And a few settings to that. And then we have ghosts. And let's set that threshold to zero there. Okay, that's not a good idea. Uh, 0.8. You can see this ghost effect, which is kind of hard to see right now. We can play with that later on. Okay, let's start with simple star. You always have uh, an option of the quality, okay? Medium is usually looks like this, and low looks like this. Um, first of all, the iterations are, as always, the number of steps uh, to make it cleaner, okay? If you have five iterations, then it looks a bit cl not even cleaner, really, which is different. <laughs> if you go to medium, it looks like this, and high looks like this. So there's definitely um, a different a difference in quality. Um, next thing is mix, okay? Minus one is original image only. Zero is 50-50, which is what you usually use. And, or no, actually, one is what you usually use. You just want the process image. You can then add it onto the rest in a different way, okay? And the next thing is the threshold. Let's go with zero for now. Um, if you have it at zero, as I said before, everything uh, gets used. And if you set it to one to 1,000, only pixels brighter than 1,000 are being used. And we don't have any of those, so uh, nothing will be displayed. So with one, that is... Um, Everything brighter than one, in this case, only this star or that dot over there. And finally, we have to fade, okay? The higher the fade is, the higher the fade is, well, not much. Usually, the higher the fade is, the longer those streaks get. But apparently, it, it works in the other direction, okay? The smaller 
uh, the smaller they are, the bigger the bigger. But in the end, it doesn't really do much. It's a bit different for uh, the streaks. We can see that in just a second. And then do you want it to rotate 45 degrees or not? You can see pretty limited, okay? Pretty limited. So I'm not a big fan of the, of, of the simple star. I never use that. Next thing is far glow. Okay, so you can see it creates that glow around the object, okay? And you have once again high, medium, quality, or low. Um, yeah, usually I always use high because here it really makes a difference. And then once again mix, original image only, or processed image only, and in between, in between. Um, threshold, is it used, does it use everything? Then it just gets this, once again, this very foggy, misty, ugly result. Or then you can just set a threshold to, let's say, 0.3. And I can see only the bright areas are used. And now if we change the, the mix to zero, you see it looks like this. And it really looks as if those areas are um, um, casting some kind of glow or something. Uh, yeah, and then the size, finally, the smaller that is, the less glow you have. Let's go with uh, 0.3 again, and here with 1. A lot of glow, not a lot of glow, okay? So it just kind of changes the radius of the glow, so to say. Cool. This is far glow. You can use that, but there are different methods, or better methods, in my opinion. You can also use an RGB curve to... Um, isolate the areas you want to you want to um, blur. And then you can just use a blur node, and then you have more control. You can go with the different blur types, and it's just much more fun. Anyway, next thing is streaks, and this is kind of like for simple stars, just much much cooler. Okay, so let's set the fade to 0.9 for now. Okay, and you can see what it does. It basically um, blurs everything in one direction right now. But now you can uh, change the number of streaks. Okay, first of all, the quality. Low looks like this. Okay, you can see the steps and stuff. Medium looks like this. And high looks like this. Now, with this streak node, I don't think low is necessarily lower quality. It's just a different result, okay? I usually go with medium um, because that looks quite all right. And yeah, anyway. Now, the iterations, two looks like this. 5 looks like this. There's definitely an improvement in quality. Also for high. Low looks like this. 5 looks like this. I even like the medium results better usually. Uh, anyway, then we have color modulation. Okay, and that just does the following. You can already see it a little bit here. If you go all the way to 1, you can see that's what we get. We really get different colors for each step, so to say. Um, point 0.3 usually is what I'm going for, or even point 0.5 sometimes but no more than that, because then it starts to look weird, okay? Um, next thing is, once again, mix. Minus one, original image only, one processed image only. And then the threshold, okay? The higher that is, you can see now only this is taken into account. If you go all the way to zero, then you can see everything just appears weird in a way. <laughs> yeah, not what you want. And then we have the number of streaks. Okay, let's go with a threshold of 0.8 for now. So we only have this and that stuff. And now if we have three streaks, you can see it looks like this. Four streaks, five streaks, six, seven. And this starts to remind you on some kind of bright light in, in the night or something. Um, 16 is the maximum. You can see it looks like this. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And then we have angle offset. You can just rotate it around um, one particular angle. And you can see that's basically what I thought would have to happen with the uh, defocus node as well. It just didn't really work there so well. And then, of course, also rather funny, the fade. Okay, the higher that is, you can see the longer your streaks get. And towards one, it really, the effect of, is, is really much stronger, okay? So from here we have like 0.5, or let's go with 0 0.5. 0 0.75 is the smallest, you can see it looks like this. And then let's go with 0.8. That's a subtle difference, okay? Now, this was a difference of 0.5, so if you go to 0.95, which is like this. And now if you go to 1, which is the same difference in numbers, you can see the effect is unbelievable. Okay, it's just all over the screen now.
And you can see this can give you quite funny results as well. It looks a little bit like a laser show right now. You can see there are so many things you can do in the compositor. Okay, let's go with 0.95 to get quite a big blur. Okay, but now um, the thing is you want to add that back onto our original image, right? So let's add in a mix node. Let's set this one to add and let's just add this image onto the other one and you can see that's what you get. And that's not quite strong enough. Okay, so let's go with five, which is really a lot. And then you can really see this glare effect there and also over here. And it looks it looks really nice. It's, it's a bit um, extreme, of course, in this scene, but it's supposed to display something. But now you can say, okay, this, this is too many streaks. Let's go with five streaks. And it's way too regular as well. We don't want it to be so regular. So what we can do, we can just add a second one. Do that there. Duplicate the add node here. Let's put that in there. And now let's say, okay, we go with three streaks. Like this, okay. And um, let's just rotate them a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong, sorry. Here is the angle. You can see like this, and let's make sure this is one, actually. Cool, and now let's say we want a fourth one. A fourth one with um, different values again. Let's go with s only two streaks for now. Um, let's also add that onto the others as well. And now you can say, okay, we have this two those two th streaks. Let me see if that even works. Okay, it does. Um, so let's just uh, rotate that a little bit as well. To, let's say to nearly horizontal. Just like this. And let's say we want this at two, okay. Or even four, whatever. This is the most dominant one. And then you can see this, well, that's what we get. And you can really see it starts to look quite, quite, quite cool. Now you can also, once again, duplicate. You can see, you can, do this endlessly. You can always get an even, coo even cooler effect with different things and you can really start mixing things together here. Let's just move that over there. And now let's just say, okay, we don't want it, this time we want a fog low, okay, to move on to everything. And let's just go with five even. Let's go with high. And size of nine, a threshold of okay, this is okay. You can see now we get this fog law, but it's not quite enough. So let's watch this once again. It's like that. Now we can add it onto itself. That's also a way to enforce things like this. We take the glow, we add it onto itself, and then we use it over here. And you can see that's the effect we get. I mean, that's a lot of glow, right? And now you can see. That's what our final image looks like. And this is a bit extreme, of course, over here, but you can really see this nice light effect and the star over here. We started out with this, okay? And now we have this. So you can really see what the compositor does here. Um, so yeah, that's essentially it for uh, the glare notes. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you, instead of the Faclo, the way we did it just there, we can also just, to look at that over here, we can also just use a filter of blur notes put that in there, like this, use a color and RGB curve, put that in there, and now you can see right now everything gets blurred if you go to fast Gaussian, like this, a bit more, but now you can just put that down, now you can actually isolate the part you want to blur, okay, like this, so this is, that was too much, this is also a way of doing it, and now you can just um, add that onto the rest, and then you can see we also get this glow effect a little bit. Like this, you can see this works as well. This way we have more control. Okay, so that's another method of to add glow, okay. Um, and yeah, I'm not even sure if you have another... Now, one thing I want to show you is how to use depth of field and motion blur at the same time. Okay, let's just delete all that and let's just use the defocus node and the vector blur node. Okay, those two. Because we've got the following issues. If we just use the... If we just use the vector blur, 
then that looks like this. Okay. But now let's just go to the 3D viewport and let's make sure that this monkey is out of focus. Like this. Okay. Back to the node editor. And this thing looks like that blurred. Let's go with a UC buffer. Let's go with 10. Okay, now to use both things together, we need to be extra clever because if we, if we do it just like this, if we do it just like that, then you don't get the best results, okay? See, it's a bit weird, it, it works, but not quite well. The problem is that we either need to make sure that um, this blurs the this blurs the defocused result, but then the speed pass would also have to be defocused in a way, which is not possible. So we go about it the other way around. We make sure that the depth pass here, the C pass, is also um, processed with the vector blur. Okay, so let's duplicate that. Let's make sure the speed is out down here. C is there and image is there, like this, okay. And then we use that as the input image Okay, now we use this as the top input, okay. Then we get this result. And that's not quite cool either. You can see there are some issues over there because it kind of just does it the wrong way. But now if we use the C depth over here and if we actually use the C depth as the top input as well. And if we use that over there, you can see it looks like this. This is a bit better, or way better. It's actually almost perfect. Let's just see what goes on here exactly. Let's just use a vector and map value node. Okay. And let's just go to point 0.1. Um, let's set this to point 0.05 actually even. And you can see that's what happens. Um, and this looks fairly good. So now you can see this is much nicer than this. Okay, here we've got this weird ghost thing going on and if we go like this, you can see it's much better and much smoother and much cleaner. Okay, so if you wanna use defocus and motion vector blur at the same time, make sure you first use the vector blur, then you also use the vector blur on the C pass and then you mix everything together over here this way so you actually get the, the right result. And, oh, one thing I didn't show you though, well, let's, let's just save this one. Let's just delete the others. Okay, so... Um, I'll just show you with ghosts. Um, let's just enforce the image a little bit. Let's go with color RGB curves. Put that down a little bit like this. And now let's just make sure we add that onto itself a couple times to make it much, much brighter. Okay, so now we have this. And you can see, that's what we get. So now let's just bump up the threshold a little bit. Okay, so these are ghosts, okay? And you can see what happens here. Let's go with the zero. We have our, um, actually a bit further to the right. We have our bright um, spot and then this casts those lens flares uh, onto the camera, okay? And you can work on them in several ways. You could, for example, now say, okay, that's not quite bright, that's not quite big enough. You could now use one of the things we talked about, dial it the road, okay? Put that in there, put that to, let's say five, which is quite a lot. Then you can see this becomes really brighter. Then our lens flare is brighter as our lens flare is brighter as well. And since only this one is considered, you can then when you go to mix one, you can see everything but the lens flare um, can be seen. And I can go even bigger. Now we really have a lot of lens flares. Now you want to make sure that you don't use iterations of five. It's just too many. Let's go with two, which is much more subtle, or maybe three, which is also quite a lot already. Um, and yeah, you can 
as always, use all the other nodes on this as well. If you go to medium, you can see it doesn't look so good anymore. Or actually, yeah, it's just a bit more blurred, less accurate. What you could also do now, for example, you could use a blur over here. Fast Gaussian, 10 pixels by 10 pixels. You'd get something like this, or you could also say, okay, I want to use that over there. And then you get something like that with two maybe. What's also quite cool is to use um, a distort node. We didn't talk about that yet. Lens distortion, put that in there. Hit dispersion all the way to one. And then you get a slightly more colored, uh, more, you can see this, this effect. This is also pretty cool. And yeah, you can also work with different shapes and so on and so forth. And yeah, these are the lens flares. And now if you move the camera actually, for example, if that bright spot is suddenly over there, then you can see the result is quite different and it automatically adjusts its direction to always f uh, go to where the point is and therefore you can really create dynamic um, results. I used this effect also in that video where the cubes start uh, rambling down on this on this reflective surface if you've seen it on my YouTube channel. Um, Okay, and then there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is an alternative to dilate a road. Okay, so let's once again delete those things. Viewer. Okay, let's also change the perspective back to where we were before. Oh, that doesn't work. I'm sorry. I need to go to there. Okay, F12. Now, another way to, sh to to create a mask, which is actually quite cool. Um, right now, let's say we want to once again use filter uh, converge ID mask. We want to change the color of the eyes, okay? So we would use the second one, which would look like this. No, that's the first one, the second one. Okay. Then we would use a color, a mix node once again. Hit red or something and use that as a previous image and mix everything together according to that. Now it's got red eyes. But you can once again see that um, it's not very accurate because we can see that it's there's this border in between, okay? If you now use a dilated road, that's too much. You can see we can get rid of this problem. And if we go to smooth mask, then also the mask is smoother. But still, it's not quite perfect, okay? We don't really have that much control. And also, it's pretty obvious that now we have too much red over here, okay? Because of the dilating, it's became too big. What we can do instead, let's just delete that. Let's just not delete that. Let's add in a blur, filter blur. Now if we use that and we go to fast Gaussian, if you go to, let's say, five pixels by five pixels, you can see we get this result and that looks really ugly, okay? But you can see it's much smoother. And now if we add in a converter, a color ramp in there, okay? You can see, if we bring those together, then it starts to go like this. And then now we have really control over the smoothness and over how much white and how much black we have. And now you can see, I can pretty accurately move it until it really fits what I need. A bit more white maybe, a bit less black here. And this is just another way to adjust a mask where it can be really accurate. See, now it becomes too bad around the edges especially. And here you can really create an accurate mask and you have a lot of control over what you blur, uh, on what you mask and with what... It's it's kind of like a feather effect, okay? This is a different mask, a way on how to create masks where I really have a lot of control. You can go with 10 and 10. And you can see now it's a bit different again as opposed to 5 to 5. It just gives a, a nice gradient a little bit. And yeah, there are so many ways to create a result in the compositor. I hope this was is useful as well to you guys. And yeah, this basically concludes these tutorials. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I know it was a it, I know it was a little bit messy, but it's just so many things I wanted to cover and it was yeah, kind of weird. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you have any kind of comments or questions or whatever, post it below the videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.